You know, I didn't have the luxury in my lifetime of going to Adventist schools or academies. I think I did 6th, 7th, and 8th grades in elementary school in Massachusetts, but then we were in uh, public school. And in my senior year of academy, my dad took the pastoral position at Hagerstown, Maryland, and I got to go to Highland View Academy. First time. And I cannot say enough about the impact that that had on my young life, because going to public school, you begin to think of, well, where am I going to go for higher education and what might I want to do with my life? Who I am and what I've become, I trace directly to HVA. Just as it was one student at a time for me, I know that that can be for hundreds of other students who go there because their lives can be literally redirected and refocused. Not to say that you can't go to a public school, but uh, for me, what I became and what I chose to do for my life was profoundly impacted by Highland View Academy. English class was where I met my wife, Jeannie. I was sitting in the front row. She was about three rows behind. Her friend Candy had put her up to this. She was commuting every day from Frederick, and of course I lived within walking distance. But I didn't have any girlfriends. I was a senior. I just moved to the community, and she didn't have a boyfriend. So one day, Mrs. Wold stepped out of, into the hallway to see the principal. And I heard behind me, three rows behind me, hey, Lonnie. And I turned and looked around, and Jeannie gave me a big wink. And uh, oh, man, I just, my face turned 16 colors of beet red. But I turned around and I winked back. And that started a series of, uh, back then, we wrote notes in class. You were not supposed to write notes. You got caught, you got in trouble with the principal. We had our share of those. My dad was a peripatetic pastor. Every year that he taught school, he moved somewhere else. All of us brothers were born in different cities. Uh, we moved to Massachusetts, we moved to Bermuda, we came to Maryland, we were only there one year. But it was that one year that God knew that I would meet somebody that would be very, very profoundly a part of my life. When Jeannie winked at me in English class there, at Mrs. Wold's uh, English class, um, little did we know at that age we would we, we were selling Christmas wrapping paper down at the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. for a senior class project. And I uh, asked her to go steady with me. Well, we wrote letters then for three years as I went to La Sierra and she went to Columbia Union College. And uh, God had a plan. The public school system today with the kinds of violence, even down in elementary school ages, as we've known too realistically in recent years, whether it's Columbine or Connecticut, is so scary. And without God in the equation, there is no answer. It's not gun control. It's not all kinds of other laws and legislation and uh, enforcing religion on people or prayers in public schools. But I think when you have an on-purpose, intentional Christian academy with a Christian faculty, a Christian environment, chapel programs, and uh, a focus on Jesus, I wouldn't trade that one single year of Mount Etna, Highland View, for anything on this planet. Um, I get choked up just thinking about. In fact, for all of my brothers, there were five Meloshenko sons of the tribe of Joseph and Ann Meloshenko that went through Highland View Academy, we trace that one single year that we spent there as perhaps the, one of the most transitional, most profound, most memorable years in our entire lives. It changed all of us. You know, one of the most amazing surprises for me was to discover in a small Highland View Academy, it was not even a boarding academy when I went there, but uh, the academics were right up there. I uh, profoundly remember the impact of my Bible teacher, my English teacher, music teachers, and today I think parents in particular can uh, just relax and know that Highland View Academy is right there at the top. And uh, they're going to be ready for about anything that faces them, any opportunities that come their way. So think about uh, my fellow alumni out there and uh, future alumni that are going to be part of the Highland View Academy tradition. You know, we don't know how much impact our particular contribution can make. But uh, I happen to be a recipient of worthy student funds in one, one or two, two occasions in my life, clear through the seminary. And to, to give 
sacrificially to an alma mater like Highland View Academy, which is making a profound impact on the lives of young students, particularly in the science fields now. And I'm very proud of that fact, to hear that Highland View is way up there. Uh, we can give kids a huge jump start on their lives and their future. You know, it's been fun for me in just recent years to connect, and especially traveling with the Voice of Prophecy at different camp meetings, different occasions. Perhaps the alumni, uh, alumnus that I met the most frequently was every single year I did chapel at Andrews University for almost 20 years. And Dean Boward was teaching music at uh, the academy level and on the band. Very proud of Dean. I think he's just retiring. And uh, John Negley, the property of the Highland View Academy, was made available by the Negley family. John has done very, very well in construction and working with, uh, he built the Review and Herald, built a couple of hospitals in Florida where he is right now. And of course the Beachley brothers, Ron and Cecil, we've seen them connected with a couple of other individuals, uh, Janice, former Hawk, and Ron Neald, who's been in very, very poor health. Um, Retha Ward over in Eastern Shore, saw her camp meeting just a few weeks ago. And uh, Mary Ellen Tritch, she was a couple of classes behind. Then of course I also get some angst and uh, real emotions surface when I go to the Vietnam Memorial Wall and I see some Mount Etna, Highland View Academy heroes. Some were my classmates. Ron DeLong went to Vietnam. And another one was, of course, Nolan Bird. I think there's at least two other alumni from Highland View Academy. On the phone the other day, I got to talk with uh, Clarence Phillips. I think he's down in Florida somewhere. Been a Washington, D.C. cop for a number of years. They were in class uh, with, he, he was in class with us. And uh, Sharon Smith, I've been in touch with her. She's in uh, somewhere in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. I had an offer to uh, go into dentistry. A dentist in Frederick, Maryland suited me up for two days in my senior year at Highland View Academy and said, I'll pay, I'll, I'll pay your way through dental school. I know you're a good student. Well, I passed out every time you pulled out a tooth. <laughs> at that very time in our Bible class, we were to be reading some, some messages to young people. Jeannie happened to be reading something. She was a classmate same senior year, and it had something to state to the effect that many of our young men are considering um, the medical field. God is calling them into the gospel ministry. They should consider the ministry. That had a profound, that was a pivotal turning point. That was a fulcrum for me, and it happened right there in Mount Etna, Highland View Academy. So God was working on me, one student at a time.